पोएट्री लाइफ एंड बियॉन्ड बुक ऑफ पोएम्स रिटिन बाय डॉक्टर सुदीप्त चैटर्जी पब्लिश्ड बाय संस्कृति चर्चा मिस्टर शांतनु नंदो ऑफ संस्कृति चर्चा प्लीज हैंड ओवर दिस बुक टू ग्लेन टी मार्टिन ही इज अ पोएट फिलोसोफर एंड पीस एक्टिविस्ट मार्टिन प्लीज कम Then the release of special issue of culture and quest on peace mate. It will be done by uh, Mrs. Handelman from Israel. Will be presented by Sri Kali Prasanna Gangopadhyay, joint coordinator of this. Now, what is the other issue? This book is with you. Another book is Global Understanding, Problems and Prospect, edited by Dr. Santina Chattopadhyay, published by Monon Prakasan, and it is to be presented by Sri Brajagopal Maiti. Monon proprietor of Monon Prakasan, please come on the dais and hand over this book to Darvish Sadlani, Harit Darvish Sadlani from Iran. Now, another book, Understanding Vivekananda, edited by Dr. Santina Chattopadhyay, published by Sagnik Books, to be presented by Sri Joyadip Sen to, to Srimati Saraswati Devi from Malaysia. Open it and give the books to them also. You will get all these books in the stalls, and there is much discount for this session. There is Another book, One World Renaissance, written by Dr. Glenn T. Martin. It is a holistic, One World Renaissance, holistic planetary transformation through a global social contract, written by Dr. Glenn T. Martin. I request Professor Shantina Chattopadhyay to formally open the book 
and Dr. Martin will hand over the book to Professor Shantina Chattopadhyay. I, I want to express my deep gratitude for that, uh, Professor Chattopadhyay, and I want to give him the first copy of my newly released book, One World Medicine. It is accepted with heartfelt thanks. We are doing such work, so try to feel that from distant part of our globe, he is here and with young spirit and young man. Thank you. <laughs> then, another book. No, I am coming to. Uh, Christi o Onesa Shatuttur Parbir Bangla It is edited by Dr. Santina Chattopadhyay with editorial board and it will be presented by Simoti Bhagavati Mitro joined from Menor of Dismit and it will be released by Muhammad Nurul Huda, uh, National Poet of Bangladesh. Another is Ishisa's model of peace education and peace, its peace projects. Uh, it will be released by Eugenia Alman and Dr. Kaputi Chakravarti is presenting this project to to Edwin Alban. We have in this leaflet, we have developed two things. With UNESCO, we have developed model of peace education and we have developed a project that is to found Peace Institute in Kolkata in the, to organize the uh, Eastern Zone. It is communication are going on with central government, UNESCO, West Bengal government and some other NGOs. I we seek your cooperation and assistance and guidance. Now another book is written by my friend Mamata Kundu, Dr. Mamata Kundu from North Bengal. She will where is she? This book will be released by Swami Supernanandaji. <laughs> Two copies are there, so who knows Bengali only, they will be given this book. Swami Vivekananda at Jugantu Karyan Nesam, Dr. Mamata Kundu, published by Sanskrit of Pustak Bhanda. And there are several other books we are uh, not uh, opening it today. Robindranath Vishwabhava, 
রবীন্দ্রনাথের বিশ্ব ভাবনা ইট ইজ অলসো রিটিন ইন বেঙ্গলি ইট ইজ এডিটেড বাই ডক্টর শান্তিনাথ চট্টোপাধ্যায় পাবলিশ বাই মনন প্রকাশন আই এম ইনভাইটিং অর্পিতা প্রধান টু গিভ ইট টু মোহাম্মদ নুরুল হুদা ফর রিলিজ ইন দিস বেঙ্গলি বুক and copies are to be given to them only who knows bengali
respected uh, learned guests from all over the world and my dear friends. As we are progressing in this world in the 21st century, on one side we find that we have made big strides in the area of science, technology, and a lot of material progress is there. But simultaneously, the, the quantum of global conflict is showing no signs of receding. On the contrary, wherever we, we, we point our fingers, for one reason or the other, the conflict is only escalating. Peace, which has always been dear to our heart, has to be looked into in, in ways more than one. Our fundamental thinking, our approach toward life has to change. And a whole lot of it is going to come from Eastern philosophies, from thinking of people like Swami Vivekananda. On this auspicious occasion, I'm so thankful that in a gathering of this can be arranged. And on behalf of my department, uh, we are also given a small appreciation of this, releasing this special cover. But I, I'll go back and go through these, all these tomes of literature and I'll try to reform myself as to how I can change my own thinking and how I can inculcate those changes into my own children so that the world of tomorrow is more peaceful than the world of today. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Um, Umrao. Now I invite the guests of honor. Muhammad Nurul Huda, poet of Bangladesh. Salam, Namaskar, peace be upon you. Honorable President of this wonderful niche of illumination of peace, keeping, I feel, we become in the center around the luminaries like Ramindra Tagore, Ram Krishna, and others. Today, on the Western part, Martin, in the eastern part, Shantina, and all of us around them, we are having perhaps this wonderful parliament of peaceful people of this world. We are dreaming a world where we live in peace. What is peaceful is beautiful. So, in one word, I want to say that the first word for us is peace. The last word is for us peace. The small poem that is printed in the book, released today in one of the books by me, I want to recite. And that is the end and the beginning and also beginning of peace. Peace and peace and peace. Peace is the first lesson. Humans must love. Peace is the first lesson. Humans must teach. Peace is the first lesson. Humans must have. Peace is the last conviction. Humans must praise. Peace is the last motivation. Humans must talk. Peace is the last destination. Humans must reach. Thank you very much. You will see that we have started the poem, 
and the second part poetry on peace we have started with the poetry written by vivekananda and the last part peace peace and peace written by mohammad nurul huda of bangladesh now i invite miss eugene almond secretary general wcpa and advisor peace miss committee miss almond I want to thank the, uh, the Sri Ramakrishna uh, Mission for, uh, for providing venue and uh, SSR for coordinating the World uh, Thinkers and Writers Meet and, I would, uh, and uh, helping to uh, provide hosting for the Provisional World Parliament. Uh, Vishva Samsat. Just briefly, I'll have to be very, see if I can be brief. We're called here, I sense, each of us as human beings, we are called here not by the international community and not in representation of an international community but perhaps rather and hopefully by that providence providence, providence that is for the human destiny. There is here nearby the great ocean and there is the sound, the name which is called by the ocean. This sound of the ocean, I don't know how many of you have gone down to the beach and have listened to the ocean. There's a time when the ocean is silent. Then there's a time when the ocean is vociferous. Its call is very loud. And Our destiny as human beings right around this world our destiny will be decided by that name we hear as it comes from the ocean. I don't know if, if we're hearing. So in brief here we're meeting uh, in, with uh, uh, on, uh, uh, the, the writers and uh, thinkers meet has helped to bring together in the past as well, has helped in building this forward, a provisional world parliament, Vishva Samsat. And that Vishva Samsat is not something that is handed down to us by an international community, by an international owner, by an international, by an international status. But rather, each of us, you and I, each of us here at the, at the meet, each of us here, in Vishva Samsat. This is provisional world parliament. Hmm? We have full operation of operative world parliament later. We're coming together to lay the foundation as the 
in India 100 years before the independence, before 1948, there was the uh, Raj Sabha and the Lak Sabha hmm? working to build India. In the same sense, we have a duty, a responsibility, and also right to come here today and to come here in the, in the writer's need for finding that self-government which is necessary for human peace at the great level and at an institutional level. Jose, in following in English, I don't know if I can say this in I can't say it in uh, Bengali, but in Hindi perhaps you will understand if I can say. Hum sab ko bishpa saraj ki kamiyabi ki liye kami kamiyabi ke liye ek saath milke kam karna chahiye. Briefly in English, this is saying that together all of us, please, for the self-government, for the autonomy worldwide, which is a, a necessary prerequisite of peace on an institutional level worldwide, let us all get together for self-government. Hmm? Get together. There is work to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Alman. She is a lady of intercultural understanding. One paper is printed in the journal. She has written on our national song, Janagana Manoyati. She has interpreted and concluded why this song will be limited to Bong Bay of Bengal, why it will not create waves in Atlantic and other oceans also. Thank you. And I have forgotten the uh, name of uh, Sumitra Sen, whether she is here. Name. Now I am inviting Mr. Farid Darba Darvesh Satlani because she is, he is ill. He will speak few words and will leave the hall. Mr. Satlani, please. Sh will you be able to come here or you will be this? Because perhaps you have some low back pain. You may say on from the chair also. You please, you, I request Dr. Satlani to say a few words. He has come from Iran. Glad to present at this conference, and I wish to peace for all people of the world, because in these days we need to to peace and tolerance more than any time. Thank you. I'm invited.
writing, Emeritus Professor Dr. P. Chaito Vivek, Vice President of WCPA, to speak few words. Swamis and President, Professor Dr. Santipat, and all very catch and <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. I feel we have a great honor and pleasure to be invited to attend this very important meeting. And actually I think I have to admire the organizing committee to choose this institute to be the venue of this kind of meeting because uh, I was told that uh, Rama Krishna uh, Institute of Culture is not a religious place. In fact, it's an inter-religious activities going on in this place. We need this kind of interreligious actions. I used to think of the, instead of having UNO, United Nations Organizations, we should have URO, you know, International Religious Organization. If we do have this kind of organization, I think it will be more peaceful in the world, I'm pretty sure. In fact, I have uh, written to Vice President Dr. Santipat that my keyword to in the uh, for this meeting is love and brotherhood. I call it the basic root of world peace. These keywords, I in fact, I was inspired when I visited Japan. Kyoto, Kyoto in Japan, to visit the Umoto, which now 122 years old. I was invited to attend the anniversary both for Umoto, 122 years, and also 90 anniversaries of the so-called UBA, ULBA, Universal Love and Brotherhood Association. I was so impressed with the vision of the former Onisaburo Degushi, one of the co-founders of the Umoto. Even though he was jailed, he was caught, he was suffered by the misunderstanding of government, he still think of the keywords of how to build peace to the world. And he founded the Universal Love and Brotherhood Association 90 years ago. And in fact, they also have the branches in Bangladesh, in Nepal, in Sri Lanka, and India, and also in Mongolia. I just visited the 10th anniversary of the branch over there. So since I used to be the UNESCO Regional Network for the Chemistry of Natural Products in Southeast Asia when I was uh, teaching chemistry in the Tulangkorn University. So I proposed to them that we should have an international network uh, of universal love and brotherhood association together and work together. And I proposed to them and they agreed to my proposal. So uh, now I'm going to set up a foundation for U ULBA, Universal Love and Brotherhood Association Network. So the abbreviation will be F U L B A N, full ban. Ban in Thai word means blossom of flowers. So blossom, full leaf, blossom of the love and brotherhood. So next year, since uh, my society of Samnap uh, Pu which is one of the most popular uh, circuit press 
in Thailand. We are going to celebrate 50 anniversaries. I would like to invite all of you here to, attend, to go to Bangkok on the 19th to 21st of May. We have a few days of celebration. The first day will be the uh, inauguration of this Fu Ban. I invited uh, the Japanese group from Umoto to attend to, to Bangkok. And the uh, second day on the 20th of May is the Visata Buddha uh, Buddhist Day. The day the Buddha was born, enlightened, and passed away on the same day of full moon in May. And the third day on the 21st, I was taking a uh, uh, tour. Now, the uh, important places, of course, including the uh, Grand Palace and other famous places. So all of you will be invited to attend that uh, 50th anniversary of the Samnapus one in Bangkok, Thailand. I hope that uh, Professor Ken Martin can arrange to have some kind of WCPA meeting in Bangkok at that time. Uh, and I think we have to work together more closer and harder. And when I look at this today, we have been given by so many books. I would like to propose we should have a, a library of world peace. Uh, and put all the documents and books into this library and who you know, those who are working for world peace their work, their activities uh, set up into this library and the source of world peace can be found in this library and I would like to propose this institute the Ramakrishna Institute to set up this kind of library here that will be very useful for the human beings. So this is my proposal. May peace be well on earth soonest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Fiche. We, we pray that your imagination will come to reality. Always remember we are by your side. Now, I am inviting one lady. She appears like, she appears like Indian. <laughs> I was confused that how she is coming from Israel. I was thinking one Indian lady was sitting here. I am inviting handleman to speak few words. May I speak without the microphone? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes? Yes. Good. Not like microphone, you possible. Well, to begin with, I would like to introduce myself with a song. It's a traditional Jewish song, and it says, Who cherishes life? The sin your tongue from speaking evil and your lips for speaking false words. Speak peace and act upon it. You I have might to... Perform. Maybe. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thanks.
me, the, the last words of this song speak peace and pursue peace. Peace for me is not words, it is not thoughts, it is action. And if we do not start to get ourselves together and start acting upon peacing, peacing for peace, then nothing will happen. Nobody will give it to us on a tray. So what I'm actually trying to do, not trying, what I'm doing is I am gathering international artists from all over the world to start to create peaceful action, artistic actions, locally and globally. Means in local location. For me, the local location is Israel and Palestinian territories. And uh, very soon, on the last week of March, it will be the pilot venture in the West Bank and, inshallah, in Gaza. And it will be, I will tell about it more in the sessions later on. But the idea is that we create artistic ventures worldwide in all conflict areas. And you know, all conflict has a resolution. It is only a question, do we really want to find it? And so we have to force government to find it because governments do not act for the people. At the moment, the balance today in the world is for war, is for killing, is for destruction. We have to say no more. We have to start acting upon peace and bring it through actions of peace and arts. And you know, since times of old, the storytellers, the writers, the poets, the actors, all these, they were the bearers of society. They were the bearers of wisdom, of education, of culture. Where are they today? Art is not for entertainment only. It is also, but primarily the arts for education. <laughs> primarily the arts is for bearing the culture for future generations. Primarily the arts are there not only to educate, but also show creative and different ways to find resolutions for conflicts. And it is time we really have to start and really work hard because it is not only ourselves. It is the future generation. It's our children. What do we leave them? This is the world we want to leave for our children. Well, personally, I say no. I want my child, my children, to have a far better world, and I'm ready to do everything it takes so it is happening. And since I am uh, also a delegate of uh, World Peace Committee and World Peace Bond, I would just love, and also I love Bond. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Handelman. You are really an artist, and I think you have created the art of peace in among the peace lovers. Thank you very much. Now I invite Saraswati Devi from Malaysia. Her age is 82 or more, but still she is very much young. If you do not come here, please talk. Now, before her address, I am inviting Sumitra Sen is here. So, Mr. Sen, to present your book, please come. Give some copies to Bengali knowing men. To, to, to Swami Nitinya Swamandaji to 
रिलीज संस्कृति एंड ओ संहति इट इज रिटन बाय डॉक्टर शांतिनाथ चट्टोपाध्याय एंड हियर इट इज प्रोजेक्टेड हाउ कल्चर ब्रिंग्स इंटीग्रेशन एंड पीस दैट इज कल्चरल हार्मोनी This is the, this is needed. This is the record that you came. All everything will be public. And uh, now Saraswati Devi will speak few words. Your Holiness, Dr. Shantina, and Dr. Glen Martin, and distinguished guests. I I thank you all for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. If I start talking, I will not stop. But one thing I would like to tell you is, Swami Vivekananda and I have the same birthday. I I was born on the 12th of January, 1936. He was born in 1863, and. The, all of the figures are there except for the eight and the nine. And, and I have been reading the Gospel of Ramakrishna and the work of Swami Vivekananda, fourteen several volumes. And most of all, I was beside my bed is the Bhagavad Gita that he has written on. The life of Swami Vivekananda was a very difficult life. He went all over the world. He came to Sramban. Where I live, and he he gave a talk there, and we have a hall called Vivekananda Hall in Sramban, and his photograph is there, and everybody knows who Swami Vivekananda is in Malaysia. I further would like to say, one of the th main things I'm carrying out now is the trafficking of human beings, you know, uh, children. Young girls and everybody, and I went to Bangalore to see a Swamiji, and I complained to me that a lot of girls from India are taken abroad for prostitution. Please do something. These girls are going because they they want to educate their brothers. The parents are letting them go, and do something about it. He immediately uh, opened uh, took two acres of land. And built a beautiful uh, place, and he put in 300 machines, sewing machines, and he was calling all these young girls to come and do garment trading, and they are doing very well. And I don't wish to talk long. The lunch time is coming. I wish you all the best. I thank you for having me here and making me very comfortable. And I bless all of you. Thank you, Saraswati Devi, for coming in this old age. I pray for before the God. You cross centuries. Now I invite special guest of this session, Dr. Patricia Murphy. She is the secretary of International Philosophers for Peace. She will speak in the background of this philosophical model that is Ipno. Ipno firstly was international philosophers for the prevention of nuclear homicide. It was founded by John Somerville. And he included me there, and after that, in 2001, Ipno session was organized here, and then Dr. Martin took the leadership, and Marthi also be became the leader of that team. And after that, I am observing that there are two opinions. One is following Swamiji's viewpoints. 
and others like Martin and Murphy, they are talking of philosophers for peace. Peace is a wider term, and only nuclear amnesia is a narrower term. So they include everything in the term peace, philosophers for peace. So international philosophers for, for peace, Secretary Patricia Murphy will speak few words. Before that, I am telling Mongol Moy Sarkar is here? Yes. Yes? Please come, give your book to them. He is coming, he is a retired headmaster. He is coming from remote village. Whether you will come or not? Okay, you start. Will you come here? Have you brought your book? No. Okay. Okay. Good morning. I'm very thankful to be here and I want to thank the generous hospitality of the Ramakrishna Mission. And I want to thank ISISAR for their excellent uh, skills in organizing this wonderful opportunity for so many people committed to peace to meet. I'm thankful for the opportunity of recalling the history of our organization International Philosophers for the Prevention of Nuclear Omnicide, founded by John Somerville in, I believe, 1983. Uh, at that time, I was also a founding member with him. Our first meeting was held with the Central Committee of the Communist Party in <coughs> Moscow, USSR. Uh, and that was a very exciting opportunity for, at that time, American philosophers and Russian philosophers to actually meet face to face. It was the first meeting ever of Russian and American philosophers to discuss peace. Um, there was one correction I would like to make. After John Somerville's uh, uh, heading of the organization, we did have many years with Professor Ron Santoni as the head of IPPNO. Uh, and we were meeting concurrently with the Second World Congress on Violence and Human Coexistence in Canada during those years. Uh, now we are very thankful to continue to have uh, Professor Glenn Martin as the head of IPPNO. Um, we have always felt that it is important to understand positive aspects of what peace is, uh, rather than any kind of absence of war. And I was recalling many of the seminars and conferences and papers that we had during the 80s, uh, memories came into my mind, uh, meetings in Brighton, England, in Costa Rica, uh, in USSR, uh, and we spent a great deal of time during the 80s talking about the richness of positive peace ideas. It's now 2015, almost 2016 and the founding of IPPNO seems many, many years ago, which indeed it was. Uh, the biggest difficulty I encounter these days is <clears throat> discouragement. So many things that we knew and were aware of so many years ago, back in the 80s and 90s, back in the turn of the uh, millennium, are still occurring today. The problems 
the uh, disunity, the poverty, the raping and pillaging of the ecology, injustice, violation of human rights. It is sometimes difficult to restore our commitment to positive peace. But I am convinced, even when I do not feel optimistic, I am convinced it is the correct way to go. It is our only hope. And I am so thankful to be here today among so many people who feel similarly. Thank you for letting me say a few words, and I will leave you as our friend Swami Vivekananda has addressed the people of the World Parliament of Religion in 1893 in Chicago, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Murphy, she has written a very nice paper on Swami Vivekananda. And behind the writing, there is a big story. That is, when he is asked, when I told her, that I do not know anything about Vivekananda. Then he, she is asked her university library. They told, please go to our national library. They told that copies are in the Hong Kong, Singapore library. He, by years he came there, spent seven days on Vivekananda and sent me. And she is also, she has also written, Rediscovering Rabindranath. Both Martin Murphy and Almon, they have written very, very nice paper, Rediscovering Rabindranath. Uh, businessman is very much cautious. He has not given uh, other copies to uh, our friends. I am very much sorry what to do. And uh, next, Dr. Martin will say, he is the leader of the peace program. Before that, I am inviting 